is so fucking beautiful. I don't even know how to express that. Anybody that's got a great manicure, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Or a penny, huh? You know about a penny, sugar nasty, don't you? Ain't you had a penny before, baby? Huh? Uh, you can talk to me, you can talk to me. Is that, is that, are you guys related? Because that's why you don't speak to, you don't understand black people either. Alright, so, that's fucking okay, that's okay. Alright, don't worry about it. It's gonna be one or two more black guys because we have to fill the quota tonight. Alright, so, don't be put off and shit. I love that this is Boys Night Out right here, really. This is, y'all really gonna get down on that one. Yes! Really fun circle jerk tonight, huh? I like, like, the weather! <laughs> and I know it, I can tell. I can tell you are ready. You are ready to film this shit, right? Yeah. I'm the spook cinematographer. Yeah. That is so beautiful, dude. Just keep up the good work, okay? It's the beginning of a career. You look really cute with the dimples, man. That works, and no matter what age, yeah. You got dimples, don't you? Don't you? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Everybody loves dimples. <laughs> All right, so. Hey, oh, hey, the food here is excellent. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a fat motherfucker. All right, the food. Because, you know, fat people, you, you want to know what good food is, you always go to the fat person. No, no, fat people are fat because they're angry and they're trying to eat from stabbing you in the fucking neck, all right? <laughs> fat people are angry inside. You guys know, you know that, don't you? You, know, you don't understand what I'm saying, don't you, sir? I mean, you're not fat, but you understand what I'm saying, all right? I got you, I got you. I, I, one thing I hate about coming to this neighborhood, everybody's in such great shape and shit. I am afraid to go to the gym. I just don't want anybody to see my area at all, you know? I do not want to destroy the black myth, all right? I do not. I don't take that shit down. Do I give you Cuba? Anyway, so I do not want to fuck with that. Did you get what I was saying, sir? How you just want to get that? It's beautiful. All right, then. Uh, so I just want to make sure we're all comfortable. We all feel good. You in the corner, you got your ladies doing well? There you go. Thank you so much for coming out. Lovely, beautiful. Love is great. You guys are in love, right? Huh? You are in love. Ten years. Oh, shit. Give it up for ten years. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. That is like fucking 30 engagements. That is. No, but women stay together, men. <laughs> no. We move on, don't we? You know, don't we? Yeah, you're not looking, you're not making eye contact, so I know you. <laughs> you make your rounds, don't you, pimp status, don't you? Huh? You got six years of fucking around, right? Six years of fucking around. No, six years of in your relationship with who? My man right here? Oh, he at home. Yeah, that's how you stay together. That's how the fuck you stay together. He locked up in the basement with a bowl of corn and raw meat and shit, I bet. That's how y'all stay together. Six years of fucking torture, that's what the fuck you're doing. Shit, I, I kept somebody for six years, but the cops came. Anyway, <laughs> let them the fuck go. Alright, hey, I want to make sure people in the very back, are you guys having problems hearing or seeing anything? Y'all doing okay? Um, Y'all doing okay in the back? Applaud if you're doing okay in the very back. Um, one lady in the back was really fucking angry. She was angry. I'm sorry you're angry here. Alright. I tell you what, y'all. I tell you what, good people. Dig it. Yeah, hey, I have no idea what you said. I'm just being alcoholic. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right, so people, listen. This is what's important. It's important that you applaud very big, that you listen. We know, baby. We already we all did. We already did that shit, okay? Thank you so much. That means you're listening very well. You, you get a gold star later on tonight, okay? I'll make sure I bring it over. All right. Also, that we listen very closely because you have some great talent here tonight. So, people, I want to ask you, are you ready to get down and have some show? One of the comics in the community that we all respect and love, and this brother is on the grind. Very talented young man. Everybody, really dig deep and put your hands together 
for Kevin Monroe! This is not my ego speaking. I am literally too big for this stage. What's going on? Harvey's, how you doing? Yeah. I had to check myself for a second, I didn't know where I was. <laughs> this is nice to have a big audience, man. Give it up for yourself for coming out tonight. Really, yeah. give it up for yourself. Yeah. Nah, this is nice. I mean, you don't get audiences like this normally. I just did a show last week where they literally brought me on stage like, lady and gentleman, <laughs> Kevin Monroe. It was horrible. I did a show last week in San Jose. Anybody from San Jose here? <laughs> Thank you. I don't even know where this place is. It's, it looks too nice, we can't go there. I won a comedy competition at the San Jose Improv. I won $500. But it was kind of a ghetto show because they paid me the $500 on stage. Like, hey, Kevin Monroe! One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Kevin Monroe from San Francisco. Kevin Monroe, that doesn't know anybody in San Jose, has won five hundred dollars in cash. Kevin Monroe will be taking the ten thirty-six Cal train back to San Francisco. You'll be outside in five minutes. <laughs> All these like vatos and cholos are looking at you like, hey, congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> you wanna do some right shots? <laughs> you know a bar right around the corner? <laughs> like, no, no thanks, bro. It's terrific. Is anybody watching the Olympics, by the way? <laughs> of course, no doubt. Um, why, look, I'm from a third world country, so I'll put this on you right now. Why is America playing third world countries? That's not fair. <laughs> Did you see that shit? The USA basketball team playing Angola. <laughs> Angola. Why are we playing? It's horrible. We, America, we picked the 15 biggest athletes we could find. LeBron James, Tyson Chandler, Kobe Bryant. How are you thinking to pick the oh, uh, Angola team? Okay, the first 15 men with shoes? <laughs> Come to the UN station? <laughs> we have a helicopter waiting for you. <laughs> it's not fair! <laughs> you know, the UNC, after the game, they're shaking hands. Good game, my brother, good game. Good game, my brother, good game, good game. Are you still eating that? <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair! Look, first world countries should play first world countries, third world countries play third world countries. First world countries win a gold medal, third world countries win US passports. <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, you don't know where it is. Get out of here. You don't know where it is. No, America's a terrible with geography. You don't know where it is. Trinidad and Tobago? I know. Go to Africa, make a left. <laughs> you don't know where it is. You don't know. It's a tiny, tiny island. It's so tiny, the 100 meter sprint has a left turn. <laughs> That's right. Every track beat is a tragedy. Boom, go, 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 left, 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 left. <laughs> Tiny space, man. So uh, I just had this feeling about third world places, man. I mean, you guys don't understand how ridiculous it is. Like, you guys in America, you are so rich, you use candles for fun. <laughs> Motherfuckers. 
I had a candlelight dinner every night. There's nothing romantic. That's why when that whole Occupy Wall Street thing was going on, I was like, you guys are crazy, you're rich. You have everything. I mean, I was looking at them and they were going crazy. Let's go block the bus station. Let's go block the bus station, brother. Like, really? Is that the best way to beat up rich people? <laughs> By blocking the bus station? <laughs> is that how we get the 1%? Blocking the bus station? Because, you know, nothing pisses off rich people more than when the help is late. <laughs> Smith. But I could be a Will Smith stunt double. 
right? Do all the things Will Smith doesn't want to do, you know, like standing next to black people. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jada. <laughs> This is what happens. I'm really not kidding. You know, my favorite tradition 
every year, it, it revolves around shopping. Hmm. Go figure. Yes, no, I get to go shopping with my two most favorite bigots in the world. My brothers. <laughs> yes, yes. Their names are Bull and Moose. That is because they resemble two lumbering ogres. Yes, you know the type. Big forehead, knuckles dragging on the ground, unpleasantly fat, all the charm of a wildebeest. Yes, those are my brothers. Yes. And when we go shopping, we go to what is probably... Let me set the scene for you. Let me set the scene for you, because this last time I went home, it was pretty eventful. So the date, December 23rd, 2011. The place? Staten Island. <laughs> yes, Staten Island. The home of two of my most favorite things in the world. The first of which, Mob Wise and Big Ange. Have you seen this shit? Come on. This Amazonian mountain of a tranny. I don't think so. She's hilarious. I can't get it up. The second thing is the Staten Island Mall. Yes, we have one. We're the only thing more orange than the clientele or the ill-fitting Juicy Couture sweatsuits. <laughs> yes, Staten Island, where there's a wonderful mixture of X body spray, aqua de Gio, and toxic waste creating a miasma in the air that just tantalizes and says, you're home, Justin, Merry Christmas. It's true, it's true. So that morning, I'm getting ready, and my brothers are already giving me shit. They're already giving me shit. So I'm, you know, I'm walking out of the bathroom, getting ready to get dressed in my giant luggage, and Andrew comes up to me and he's all, oh, okay, fat douche. That's what, that's what they call me, fat douche. I'm not really okay with it, but well, I can choose my battles. Oh, so fat douche. We're going to Staten Island, all right? We're gonna get the gifts, it's gonna be nice. Nice. But you gotta do us a favor. Now, do yourself a favor. Tone down the gate. <laughs> Just tone down the gate. You, you, you're like a pee we need you here. Try to be butch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want butch? So you know what I wore. A pair of skinny jeans so tight, Kate Moss would have to skip a week's worth of meals to even think about fitting you. A cotton candy pink, deep v-neck, oversized sweater, it gets better, girls. The biggest purse I can find, and matching Uggs. Yes, Uggs. such wonderful places like Yankee Candle, <laughs> J.C. Penny, and Cinnabon. <laughs> and my brothers are starting to get a little lightheaded, you know, they're lumbering about these two fat bastards. Once they start getting a little hypoglycemic, they start to get hangry. Not hungry, not cranky, but hangry. <laughs> it's true. Let's face it, those little breakfast sandwiches you get at Dunkin' Donuts, they're not really a meal. Especially, if, or even rather, if you have four. <laughs> Each. And wash it down with a dumb cappuccino. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, I wasn't eating them. I was just trying to avoid sausage shrapnel. <laughs> Disgusting. So we decided to go treat ourselves to a nice little repast at one of Staten Island's famous eateries, Applebee's. <laughs> home of the riblet. And many a riblet met their grizzly end that day, my friends. Let me tell you. So we're sitting there, they're fighting over should they get rings or poppers or whatever the fuck it is that people like to eat. I don't understand. I have a Tic Tac a day and I'm fine. <laughs> as I'm sitting there nursing my second bucket of Cosmopolitan, as one is wont to do when spending time with the family. And what happens? God decided to give me a little gift for being so well behaved. He did it. What walks by my table? Not one, not two, not three, but four, count them, four marines in full regalia! Thank you, Jesus! Now I have to fight every instinct I had to jump up and grab the first one I can, blow them, and perform my civic duty. Oh, like you never did? Please, bitch, I saw you at Fleet Week. That's true. And now I didn't do a goddamn thing. All I did was this. <laughs> now that's not cause for any type of reaction. I toned down the gay, did I not? Well, it seems it wasn't good enough for Bull and Moose because this is how they reacted. Oh, Justin! In broad daylight? With the gay? The scraps! The scraps! The 
said, what are you talking about? All I did was look, there's fucking kids around, you fag bastard. Now I put off my riblets. But it's your second plate of riblets. It's the one I wanted! <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for being so kind. Oh, 
feeling better right now wearing my pajamas right now? <laughs> so fucking hot. Uh, yeah, tell me about it. It's a onesie. <laughs> What are you doing in your onesie right now? Are you doing anything yourself right now? What are you doing? No, I'm just laying in bed right now, like I told you. Playing with my pussy. Playing with my pussy. Let me hear that shit. So, like, for example, like, if I have a Native American patient, we're not supposed to look them directly in the eyes when speaking to them because it may be considered rude. Or, like, if we have, like, a Mexican patient, we're not supposed to ask them what kind of health insurance they're covered under. <laughs> about nursing, especially about cultural competence. When I met her for the first time, she was like, Hi, Justin, my name is Sheila. You're going to be working with me today. Now, I know you're brand new to this whole nursing Take it easy. And notice I'm culturally competent with those patients. Right now, I'm in two bed one. is an African-American male patient by the name of Tyrone, naturally. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, sure, Sheila, sure. But we walk inside and there's Sheila's all... Anything. <laughs> uh, so, 
forever. We walk out and say, and that's how you're culturally competent. Yes, and I want you to go and three and four for Mr. B, submissive, obedient Chinese male for literature. And go ahead and walk inside and take me from the low tarot and apply to Mr. B. Okay, can you do that? I was like, oh yeah, sure, but I thought that whole thing that Nurse Sheila did was completely racist and inappropriate, obviously. And Nurse Sheila didn't even curl her hair before walking in. Thank you for agreeing. And I walked inside Mr. Lee's room, and I was just like, um, Hi, Mr. Lee, my name is Justin Lucas. I'm going to be your nurse today. I just have a couple questions about your medical history. Do you have any history with hypertension, or uh, diabetes, or asthma, or any kind of mental issues, like schizophrenia or anything like that? And he didn't do anything at all. Mr. Lee just looked at me, smiling with his eyes wide open. <laughs> So I'm freaking out here, he's looking at me like a crazy clown, and she just take her copious notes on how to grade me at the end of the day. I get so nervous, I do the whole thing all over again, and she was like, Mr. Lee Haida! <laughs> Couple questions about the medical history, yeah? <laughs> Legal diabetes, <laughs> So the moral of that story is never to assume that people do not speak English. As <laughs> <laughs> a typical American usually does. My name is Justin Lucas. You guys are just like Right? Like he went to me, he went, oh, 
honey, you better moisturize. And I'm like, why? He goes, because white people age badly. <laughs> right? I'm like, I know white people don't age well, but you Asian people better watch out too, because sure, Asians look young for 60 years, and then bam, one day you just look dead. <laughs> it's true, right? When you're Asian, you're 28, you look 28. You're 40, you look 28. You're 50, you look 28. You're 60, you look 128. <laughs> Michelle Kwan and wake up Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> right? It's true. But at least we're having a good time. We're dating. I have a hard time dating people. A lot of people don't want to date me. One guy broke up with me. Remember we talk a little bit? I talk a lot, right? And one time I went to the movies with this black guy and he broke up with me after because I talked too much during the film. <laughs> Yeah, can you believe that? Oh, because he was a fancy scientist working on a human genome. And, uh, <laughs> right? I'm like, I need to be young, but I know what the human genome is. My parents have one. Of <laughs> this, is a, this is a good show. I'm so glad we're here tonight, you know? I mean, what? Soup Freaks is closed, so you might as well come here, right? You know? How does Soup Freaks look? Are you sad? The hospital cafeteria across the street is closed. <laughs> Okay, I'm back in from Jersey, 
I'll come, Justin O'Neill, any fucking day. <laughs> now, if you sit down, Justin O'Neill, you're new at this. Uh, you're new. We're, he's my little jumping A over there, right? <laughs>
I, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's true. I'm a yoga teacher, everyone. Namaste. Um, it's true. I, uh, here, here's the deal. I love teaching yoga. The people in San Francisco are so fucking judgmental, right? Like, it's so annoying. Like, I also have a night job doing this, and I love the drink. And today, fucking Moonbeam was there with her hairy armpits, right? She's like, oh, you're the yoga teacher? And I'm like, yeah, so? And she goes, I ever heard you say that you were hungover. Uh, I'm like, I'm just a yoga teacher, I can still drink. She's like, oh, no, you're a yoga teacher, you should listen to your body. Your body will tell you what it wants, your body will tell you what it needs. And I was like, listen, come. <laughs> <laughs> right? I've been listening to my body for 33 years, and it tells me it wants boys and fight it. <laughs> right? I know, back off, fucking moonbeam, back off, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but then like, when I'm out in the bars and I wear my mom with these and everything, like all these hippies, they just sniff me out and they find me. And the other night, this girl was like, ooh, you're a little ill-sufficient in your heart chakra. <laughs> right? Well, she's fucking like Shannon Yeager shots. Right? <laughs> she's like, here, let me feel your heart chakra. And then she comes in the back and she has one hand here and one hand there and she stays there for 20 fucking minutes. And I'm looking and I'm looking like, she ain't even feeling my heart chakra, she's just trying to fucking stand up. I'm going to try another new joke. Are we on board? Yeah! Here's the deal. It's political season, right? And I fucking hate the political season, right? We know Obama's going to win, right? Obama's going to win. Yeah! But we have to do with those Republicans, right? But you know, beyond Obama and beyond you know the Republicans, you know what I'd like to see in the White House? Fucking Oprah Winfrey. Yes. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't Oprah Winfrey be great in the White House? Like I could just imagine, like if Oprah Winfrey was in the White House, there's like four things that I want her to say, like in her first term. Like one day I just want her to turn, click on the TV and see her and she goes, Hey everyone! <laughs> Today the Oval Office is getting a man. Secretary of Interior, Nate Perkins! <laughs> Turn on the TV another night for the address from the president in here. Hey everyone! Look under your
So anyways, thank you so much for being here and maintaining eye contact. Thank you for not texting during the show. I fucking, I'm so out of tolerance. Like, I'm so fucking out of tolerance with people walking down the street looking at their phones. It's like, you know, I wish a cartoony death upon them. But they, uh, yeah, like a boy, and they, you know, they hit with a hammer that says, you're rude, and, uh, <laughs> They die falling into a pothole while using an app looking for potholes. <laughs> Pay attention and watch where you're going, app hole. <laughs> San Francisco, it's like we're supposed to be loving and tolerant, but we're fucking out of it. Like we're nowhere left. You know what I mean? I just like so. And you know what? I'm sorry, but trying to park. If I want your parking space and you're not leaving, here's what civilized people do. Not leaving. Don't fucking shame me. <laughs> like I'm in public wearing shorts and heels. <laughs> Actually, I had a roommate, this is just an aside, I had a roommate who once had a nightmare that he was staring at a parking sign that had eight sides. <laughs> it only happens to be in San Francisco. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, so uh, I, I just moved and I just broke up with someone. Don't worry, it's not contagious. Thank you. I think, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, I'm so, I couldn't even find my funny. Like, I just brought, I look like Ron Vine on stage. I just had tons of notes. And, uh, <laughs> one of my Cottonelle wipes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cottonelle wipe, you know, it's the poor woman's bidet. <laughs> anyway, so it's just been, it's just been awful. So this guy broke up with me. You know, actually, I broke up with him because he had some commitment issues. He didn't call me when he said he was going to call me. You know that, like, that's a deal breaker for me. Swear to God, he called me yesterday and says, I'm going to call you back at 7. Didn't fucking call. And it's like, are you, do you want to make it into my act, little man? I mean, what's, no, I mean, really, like, that's just crazy to me. He, um, has commitment issues, told me, I asked him, I said, well, look, what's going on? And he said, um, I don't know, you just asked me too much if I was drinking enough water. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I'm just really worried about him. He's worried if he's drinking enough water. And, uh, <laughs> drinking enough water, and you know what sucks is that, like, you get all these love chemicals. You know, and I knew it was just for sex, but you see all these love chemicals. So I've been eating like, you know, chocolate makes you feel like you're in love. So I've been eating like a lot of chocolate. And <laughs> 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 Hi, this is Graham. Here, you want to come in with this microphone? I mean, you probably just have to like go with that, but you know what? Someone hand her the microphone. Let's pray, everyone! Thank you very much. It's a relay. It's a relay. Now you do a joke. And a tricep curl. Um, so anyways, I've been eating a lot of chocolate. And you know what's the awful thing about fucking Facebook? It's like you don't even have to drive by someone's house anymore to get pissed off at what they're doing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> How do you just go on Facebook? Why the fuck are you smiling? <laughs> fuck you and you out. Like it's just crazy. Like you just get so obsessed. I've been obsessed with my phone. Like seriously, I saw the light hit the screen of my phone. Like, Can you call me? <laughs> Oh my god, I wish that I had an app called My Sensible Black Girlfriend. 